In this video, I'm doing a Chinese carbon frame and wheel and some other parts bike build. It is a cyclocross bike or gravel. Um, I ordered the, chain, the frame from China and the wheels and actually most of the parts. Uh, the frame was about $600. I'll go over all the prices of each thing with approximates in Canadian dollars, not US. So right now, assume that it's, the US dollar's about uh, three quarters of, 75% of the Canadian dollar. So if I said, a, if I said this frame was a thousand dollars, it would be 750 US. But this frame was $600 Canadian, or a bit more, just not by much, just over 600. These wheels were about 500, four to 500, I think. Um, so under around a thousand bucks for frame and wheels with fork frame came with headset frame came with a carbon seat post uh wheels are 60 millimeter and uh has an 11 speed free hub i did want the through axles front and rear uh i am a mountain biker so i know how much stiffness that adds not that it matters a whole lot. I just like the feeling. I got the SRAM GRX uh, 1x11 group set. Came with an XT uh, 11 to 40 two tooth cassette. Uh, this frame is pretty light. I just hope it doesn't explode while going over a bump or something. Uh, I would not recommend doing this build. I think it is very unsafe. I will put in the description if I remember a, I just watched a few days ago. Don't get me wrong, the guy was on a, a trail bike riding downhill, but it was a carbon, just like this, a Chinese non-branded carbon uh, trail bike and he's riding a bit of downhill on it and the rear swing arm exploded and he broke his ankle and in the video he's, on a, in a cast with his broken ankle explaining to never buy these. <laughs> so it's not a safe thing to do. I'm doing it for the fun of it. Uh, and I, I will always look for cracks and stuff. Not that you can, it's not an aluminum frame. You cannot see cracks happen all the time. They do can, they can start from an inside layer and then explode. The frame would, the head tube might rip off. You go over a pothole or who knows? It's just worst case scenario. I'm talking, um, but you can get hurt. I mean, uh, a, a Trek or a giant carbon frame can explode after however many years of use also, but uh, much more unlikely to. So uh, I'm gonna move the frame and wheels over to the bike stand and then video the rest of the parts. So these wheels are laced to Novatech hubs. Nothing special, but uh, I mean, you can spend a you can spend five hundred dollars just on hubs, so it's not too bad. Um, here's the frame, in all its glory. You can uh, it it does come with mounts or holes for normal rim brakes and also flat mount for disc brakes. I'm doing flat mount disc brakes. Uh, normal drilling for water ball cages. Long steer tube that I'm going to cut down. Seat post has markings on the back even. Rear flat mount. Rear axle. So it's uh, rear is 10 by 142. No, sorry, 12 by 142. And the front is, it's the standard road size for through axles. Um, 12 by 100 up front. And that's why I got these hubs in. Also, these hubs have the Shimano under that ring there. It has the Shimano center, center lock uh, disc. Which these GRX discs fit. Actually, this might be uh, 
non-GRX rotor just from the mountain line. RT800. Got some tubes uh, with long valve stems. I don't like running uh, valve extenders. They're a pain in the ass sometimes. Uh, so 80 millimeter valve stems. I've I've measured it and I might be able to get a 60 millimeter in there. I have these Maxxis refuse tires that are, as you can see, 700 by 32 C. This frame on the site says it can only fit uh, 32 C in the width, but I'm thinking it can fit a bit bigger. Uh, I went safe and ordered the Max 32. Uh, hard to say, it's not tons of room down there. Up here, there's tons. You kind of want a bigger a bigger tire than that on a, depending what you're riding on a gravel frame. But, uh, so I was kind of weirded out about that. But 32 is still a decent size. This is probably a fake Richie stem, Richie Axis 4. Uh, probably fake is very fake. But, uh, says it's aluminum, carbon aluminum. I don't know. Whatever. Hopefully it doesn't explode. That wouldn't be fun having your bars come off. These bars are almost my favorite part of the bike with the big flare out over there. I don't know what you call that in, uh, mountain biking flat bars you have the sweep and the rise and whatever i don't i don't know what you, you call that these bars aren't necessarily fake they're just a chinese brand they're about 90 dollars, i think but really wide ball cages the cassette uh bar tape chain which is shimano all the shimano stuff is reels didn't do a knockoff drivetrain because i i find the drivetrain is the very the very the part of the bike you feel so i didn't want to cheap out on that i wanted to get something new and good and grx just came out a year ago these are uh this is the left um shifter brake lever but it's not a shifter it's just a brake lever because it's a one by uh grx rx 810 is the one by setup i'm pretty sure 11 speed 40 tooth narrow wide or however shimano wants to call theirs uh this is the 11 speed right shifter actually with the paddle there this just has a, a fake paddle these levers are redesigned for a, redesigned from their roadside to cyclocross to be different, to be more grippy in the mud and stuff. Uh, derailleur, the clutch, just like a mountain bike derailleur, but GRX. That is the RX812. Rim tape came with the rims, or wheels, spokes. Spacer if you want to run, run a 10 speed cassette or smaller. Bottom bracket, I had to buy this separate from the set and I got it wrong. Uh, the frame is actually a, it's a BB386 I think it's called. So it's a 46 millimeter diameter, outer diameter, and 86.5 millimeter width. And then I need a 24 millimeter straight spindle, 24 each side. And I ordered, uh, I think this is a 41 millimeter or something um, diameter. So I won't be able to get it done tonight, the build, because of that. I have to wait for a new bottom bracket. Here's the hydraulic brake calipers. Um, hell of a time. I hate, I hate the idea of having internally routed. I mean, the fork won't be internally routed but internally routed uh, hydraulic brake cables. I just don't like the idea. Anytime you wanna do anything or take them off, you have to re-bleed them and disconnect them and all that. I mean, mineral oil, it runs mineral oil, so, so it's not like dot fluid that's corrosive and whatnot, but still, it's still not, not very fun. Now this frame does come internally routed for, pre-internally routed for everything mechanical. Um, I'm going to take off this brazon mount, but it does come with a brazon mount, so you can run a 2 by up front if you want to do a GRX 2 by or an Altegra 2 by with uh, smaller chain rings and normal road. Uh, or you could use this just as a normal road frame, hell. Uh, so it comes with the cable lining. 
for the until we routed part. It's gonna be fun getting the uh, hydraulic cable through that, but we'll see how that goes. Hopefully not too bad. I mean, I'm gonna leave the, I'm gonna do that before putting the bottom bracket in so I can reach it in here. And yeah, uh, I think that's enough explaining. Uh, I'll go through a few more prices. Tires about 180. Whole GRX group set without bottom bracket about $1,400. Uh, the bottom bracket is like 30 or 40 or something. Uh, I already got the bars. These pedals I'm probably won't be putting on, but they were like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Tubes, whatever, 10, 20, 20 bucks for them both. This psycho computer was cheap. I think like $20. $20. Um, yeah, and that's that's about it. Uh, I think the around the total price, I quickly thought of it. I think it's around $2,600, $2,800, but... Uh, might change if I change up some stuff. But yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and get building it. So I got the back wheel on, cassette, disc, tire and tube, rim tape. Uh, yeah, you can't go any bigger than 32C. <laughs> and it's, it's not, the width would be a problem if you went bigger, but I got a problem with a hop in the rim here or the tire. It just, it just hits there. Right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten these two spokes. These two spokes. Uh, these four spokes to try and bring it down a bit. Uh, also, I did I did pump them up to their full PSI of 75 psi, so that doesn't help either. Could uh, tone it down to 60 or so, and it might help. But that kind of sucks. Um, other than that, it looks pretty good. These axles, axles are actually pretty good. Uh, it has, so you can bring it out and position it the way you want. Uh, don't do them up too tight, just snug, because the carbon, you don't want to crush the carbon. And then you put the lock nut over here, you just do that up a bit too, just to snug it up. But yeah, I'm gonna check out this tire problem and go from there. So another thing I'm uh, unhappy with, this uh, Park Tool tool, as far as I know, has the smallest amount of metal for the cassette lock ring or the lock ring for a center lock disc. It can uh, go over a quick release end so that you don't have to take out the skewer. It's that the diameter, the inner diameter is that big on this tool. They did it for that reason. Now this wheel, this hub, which is weird because it's a Novatech hub. Um, this collar here comes out a bit. It, uh, it gets, the diameter gets larger. The outer diameter gets larger out here. So it has a bigger surface area to, to, uh, to press up against the fork with. Now, that's all good, but this can't fit over it. <laughs> so 
I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to grind it down a bit. But I shouldn't have to do that. That is horrible. That's a big design flaw. How the hell am I supposed to put on center lock discs on the center lock hub when the center lock tool can't reach it? So, I mean, that's just no good. But it is what it is. Cheap wheels, right? So I really don't like doing that um, to brand new bike parts, but I kind of had to. Uh, it'll still work fine. <sighs> Made a mess. But yeah, now it works. S still a, like I only, I only did just enough to get this over it. I still have to push it really hard in but at least it's functional now. That's too bad. So there's the stem on. I don't know if you watched, but I uh, had tried quite a bit of trouble getting it on. Uh, had to take it with the bolt and spread it out a bit and then pound it in with a spacer. Uh, do this after. If I did that after, I might not have near as much trouble. Put the, the top cap anchor in after. <laughs> So I actually didn't even realize this, but the fork has internal cable routing. So through the steer tube and out that hole there uh, for the front brake. So that sucks, but I mean, it looks good. And it'll be, it'll actually be kind of cool. Um, and it goes through the headset too. So the headset on this is kind of weird because it's a bit aero, a bit uh, aerodynamic. So it's got a hole right there. So I'm gonna try that, see how it goes. So here's the rear flat mount. It's uh, I think a 40 millimeter distance between here is standard size. Uh, I was confused when I got this frame because these mounts are hollow. Well, they can fit a bolt through them. Uh, I wasn't sure. I thought that the frame needed thread like the fork, but it's I'm wrong about the flat mount. The reason the fork can do that it has threads is because 
it has a mount that's bolted onto it like this. So I also have to internally route this caliper, but I just screw it on at the bottom, line it up and then bleed it and I'm good to go. Also, I'm not looking forward to bleeding these brakes. I've never bled a dual control lever before a road lever like that. Um, I'm gonna have to look it up actually. I don't even know where the bleed port is. Um, it's probably complicated. But yeah, the install of the caliper is very easy. If these were flat bar brakes and non internally routed, it would be a 20 minute install pretty much. But it's gonna be like an hour or two because I'm gonna have to bleed them and cut the lines to size and whatnot. Don't get me wrong, it'll be a really clean looking bike. I'm very happy with the uh, black on black. There's a lot of black, but I like it. Oh, okay. That's not good. The, uh, the bolt's pulling, pulling the caliper in a weird, I was bottomed out maybe. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the bolts bottomed out on the caliper, so I'm gonna have to put some spacers in or something. So I uh, put a SRAM Avid type or V brake spacers on it, so it only pokes out. So much looks about right kind of sucks that you have to do that but I mean I'm guessing there's no standard for the depth of these mounts but this should work just fine I didn't want to cut the bolt that's an option to cut it five ten millimeters off it or so Make it work that way. But yeah, so that's what I did. And it should tighten down fine. Right here, there's a little flake of carbon. Uh, I'm gonna have to file it down a bit, which again, sucks. They don't, that needs to be very flat so that the disc lines upright. And I'm also having an issue of the it seems, I mean, I'm going to look at the front. Might not be an issue, but the pad contact seems too high. Like not much of the pad is touching the disc, but the pads aren't that big because they're not mountain pads. So I'm going to double check that. This I shouldn't have to do, but. So here's the rear caliper. It's rubbing up there. Not not the caliper, don't worry. Um, good spacing. Might have to readjust it later. I do want to run these brakes very touchy. Uh, so the pads might be pretty close together, but we'll see. Anyways, that's the rear brake. So now I'm gonna do the duality than the bars.
So doing up the stem bolts uh, up here, it says max five NM, so Newton meters. And on the bars, it said max clamping force uh, eight NM with a two bolt stem and six NM with a four bolt stem. So it'd be best to do five Newton meters uh, on these bolts which I don't, I don't have a torque wrench. I have a torque wrench here, but it won't go that low. Um, so I'm gonna just do it by feel, which is wrong, but I'm not gonna go too tight. The bars do have a sandpaper feel clamping area. Now, if yours don't, you can get this grease that is for carbon to carbon surface, surfaces, or even just carbon to aluminum or steel. Uh, so it doesn't slip and you can, the point of that grease is so that you can use low torque settings and not have it slip when you're riding. So that's good. I'm going to leave that for now at that angle. Probably it won't be right because the bike sits a bit uh, front, front heavy on the stand. Um, I'm going to go and ride it without doing bar tape either to get a feeling for it now. That's after I get the bottom bracket. Now, as I said, this bike is set up for a front derailleur too. You can put a front front derailleur in it. It has a down, uh, down pull, uh, bottom pull cable mount down there. And I am going to take off this brazon mount to make it look cleaner, but I'm gonna save it because if I ever wanna put a front derailleur on it in the future, it'll be nice to have I might actually just use these nuts or these bolts to put on huh, the uh, water ball cage because it only came with bolts for that. So another dumb thing that uh, came up, these grommets for the uh, internal routing to go into the frame, they are not cable stops. They're just, the cable goes right through like for the brake cable. So I have no idea why they routed it with the uh, inner cable piece. Th these, these hoses here, these um, plastic, cable guides are are the same thing what you'd find in a normal housing cable without the housing around that that's the inner like sheath so i don't know why they put them in there because there's no stops to stop the cable the housing from sliding in when you hit the shifter or even when i'm installing it so what i'm going to do is run housing full housing the whole length of the bike right through and take this out so i have no idea why they even include those because they include these that don't work for what they included those for So the brakes kind of come pre-bled. They have these caps on them. And this line I had to cut, so it's no longer pre-bled. I had to cut this uh, end piece out of the cutoff cable. Uh, usually the brakes come with extra ones or you can buy extra ones, but uh, I don't have any with me. So I'm gonna just shove this in that end. And I didn't cut it with a nice cable cutter. I just used a normal wire cable cutter hopefully i'm good but either way you have to leave uh it's like 16 to 20 millimeters or something or 26 millimeters to go into there 
you take off that cap and it's already filled with fluid. I'm gonna have to bleed it from the top here. There's a bleed screw. I'm gonna have to let the bubbles come up. Uh, you do, you are supposed to put the bike or bars at least down so that the bleed or the uh, cable connector is at the highest point there. And then when you bleed them, you want the bleed screw to be at the very top. So then you put the bleed screw at the top and bleed it. Um, so this I put around here and down into there and then put another 26 millimeters, I think. Here's the line right here. The, the original cut cable comes with a marking of how long it's supposed to protrude into here. So I'm gonna go ahead with that and uh, see how I do. So I got the cable cut to the right length and the end in and cut. Um, I did not cut it with the proper cutter, but hopefully I'm still good. I definitely kind of did it in an unconventional way. So since this cable's routed through the steer tube, it doesn't get longer. The bars don't, when, it, when the bars turn, it doesn't pull the cable either way like it would with the rear that's attached to the frame because it all turns as one. So I've made it pretty short, just enough to get under the bar tape and around and in here. Actually, I think I'm still gonna, I'm gonna cut it another uh, centimeter or so because there's a bit of a bulge up here that I wouldn't hurt to get rid of. I can bring it in there like that. Yeah, I'm gonna cut another, I'm gonna cut another two centimeters off. These bars do have a recessed cable guide type thing in here. You can get it really in there and not really feel it under the grip tape, bar tape. So I'm gonna cut it again. So I got it all in there. Uh, it works, but Definitely some air in it. I can almost pull it right to the bar. I definitely want a lot better than that. So I'm gonna put the bike up so the bleed screw's at the top and I'm gonna go from there. So here we go, I got it pretty good. Uh, I ended up pressurizing it from the caliper a bit. I don't have the, cut. you're supposed to have a cup uh, system with this uh, for bleeding and it's pretty good and it doesn't really create a mess. But I have the Jaguar one and it uh, it's a syringe on both sides. So I've had problems with that, with it leaking out the lever on a mountain bike. But here it was good. Um, I put a lot of, bit of extra pressure into here. And when I when I took the bleed uh, syringe off, it kind of exploded out of here, which I wasn't too happy with. I mean, you're not supposed to bleed it that way. So what, what should I expect, right? So then then I, I had it and it pulled about uh, double the length of this. So it was about halfway instead of quarter, bam. Uh, and I wasn't too happy with that. Again, I want it almost instant engage. I want to just touch it, I just touch. And then you can, there is a screw, I think it, it might be that screw, but it might be somewhere else. There's a screw for lever reach adjustment. Maybe that one down in there. Uh, maybe I'll adjust it so it's just barely right before it hits the disc and then bam, I'll have it right on. Uh, so I'm gonna do the rear one next. I'm not gonna video that. It's the same thing as what I just did the front. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut this cable quite a bit too. But uh, this one, this one, I might have cut a bit short. It did, it did go into the, it did go into this part a bit longer than I thought it would. So this one might be a bit short, but it's, it's barely anything. Like probably just have that right there, which I was gonna have anyway. Anyways, I'll get on with the back, and then I'll put the front wheel on and see how it all works. 
So uh, front brake I got going pretty good. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's still the fake pad in there, the uh, yellow one, uh, just the block for bleeding so you don't get the pads dirty or you don't want them to touch the fluid. Uh, but I got it pretty good, bam. Like it engages almost instantly. We'll see again with the normal pads and disc in there, but it's uh, it's working pretty well and it, it doesn't feel like there's any air in there because it doesn't, I can't keep compressing it. It feels like it'll have good modulation at least. All right, so I figured out the best trick to get the pads exactly where you want them. Now, this one, I think I did a bit too much. That's, that's engaged. That's no movement at all, really. Uh, so the trick is, now, some people might want it backed out quite a bit compared to my front one. Uh, I want my front one like my rear one. I don't want my rear one this this crazy. So this has the ability to close. You can close this bleed screw, bleed nipple, while applying pressure with the syringe. So that's what I did, but I applied way too much pressure. Um, so I'm going to back it off. About a quarter of a turn total. And then uh, vacuum. So suck on the syringe just a bit. And then close it. But what I did last time was I was pushing down on the syringe. Uh, and it's just way, way too, way too close. Like the pads will rub almost for sure. There, that's a bit better. So now I got a bit more movement. And again, the more you vacuum, the more movement you're gonna get here. And there's obviously gonna be no air bubbles in there because you've vacuumed out all the air bubbles. Uh, I shouldn't press the front brake right now. I only have one bleed block and it's not in the front brake. So I don't wanna push the pistons out. So I've got, I've got the pads back in on the disc. And I'm, I'm not super happy with the uh, pull. It's about half. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm going to, it would be best if I could bleed it with the pads in it, but I'm not gonna do that cause I'm gonna get um, mineral oil on the disc and then I need new disc and pads. So I'm gonna go back in uh, with maybe a smaller spacer somehow. This spacer is in my opinion too big um, to get it perfect. Or I might, I might just try up this spacer first and pressurize the hell out of it. And then maybe that might work. Like I had it first where it, you just touched it and it was at the, at the, uh, at the engaged. So this, I read uh, about this caliper and how to bleed it uh, on the instruction manual. I'd, I'd recommend if you're getting these brakes to read the instruction manual also, it really gives you a better idea about the whole setup. But a little cotter pin goes through there because on the end of the bolt, there's this like hat thing that the cotter pin locks into. It's definitely a safety thing that like Shimano's lawyers or something made happen. It's kind of overkill, but it, I guess it stops the bolt from backing out. But yeah, it came with a cotter pin and I didn't, I didn't know why it came with the cotter pin. Same thing with those um, bolt tops. So there's the cotter pin. So again, I'm not very smart, so you don't have to tell me in the comments that I'm dumb. I already know that. But uh, I ordered a 15 millimeter axle, not a 12. So I, I have to get a sleeve for that. Uh, you can buy sleeves. They're really cheap. They're like five or 10 bucks. So I'll, I'll, I'll try doing that. So I got the bottom bracket uh, to fit this frame. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna be putting on the cranks pedals and chain only thing i'm missing to complete the build is the front axle sleeve and uh, i am going to put 28c tires on here i i made a bunch of mistakes in this build because i was looking at so many different frames for sale that i could have ordered some of them were 32 some of this this one is actually a 28 the max tire size they say is 28. That was my mistake. And I ordered the wrong size of tires, so it rubs. And it might rub in the front too once I get the run right axle because of how close it is up there. But anyways, I'm gonna be putting uh, at least a 28C in the rear, if not the front too. Same tire, Maxxis Refuse, but it'll be 28. So yeah, I'll get building it.
So there it is, it's pretty much done. Just need to get that uh, front axle and some bar wrap on it. Uh, looks pretty good. Pretty aggressive looking front end on it. I mean, whole bike looks pretty aggressive. GRX cranks look great. Oh, I might put a purple chain on it one day or something, but I want to try it first with the Shimano chain because they recommend pairing it with Shimano. And uh, I'm going to cut that. I'm not going to leave it like that. That's very dangerous. But uh, I'm going to cut it once I get the right height. I don't want to put it, I don't want to slam it and then realize that it's uncomfortable or hurts my back or something. Um, there's the seat. Uh, this is used. I got it off and someone else gave it to me or I got it off another bike or something. I can't remember. But it's a, a full carbon seat. I mean, I don't know how long. I'm gonna use it for and how comfortable or uncomfortable it might be. Uh, but if I, if I can stand it, if it doesn't uh, make me sore, then I'm gonna keep that on there. And I'll get a weight once it's all, uh, once I get the sleeve in and uh, bar wrap on, I'll get a complete, I'll do a weigh in for the bike. So yeah, I'll uh, continue on as soon as I get the next part, the last part. So I got the, uh, axle adapter sleeve and it just slides in like this has some o-rings on it to give it some resistance but i might cut them off if i can't get it in oh no there it goes there so that's uh Quick, cheap fix to a expensive problem. So up front in here, it does uh, hit with the 32C. So you definitely need a 28C in the front. My mistake from not reading the uh, specs correctly again. So I messed up on tires, front axle, and I think that was it. So, so here I got the 28C tire on. And there's lots of room up top now if you notice there's a bit of a centering problem hard to tell by the camera but what's happening is i don't know who to blame this on i don't know if i should blame it on the hub manufacturer the fork manufacturer or the or me for not ordering the right axle because i don't know how i can get this shot but um that flange see that gap there between the flange and the fork that's not supposed to be there so on this side it's gone because i grounded that grinded that flange down so i'm going to do the same to the other side but uh i don't know who to blame that on might be my fault because this is supposed to be for a 15 millimeter axle and i had to downsize it to what this axle is a 12. so i'm going to grind that down it's going to fit well so i grinded it down you can see the bit of silver there and now it's flush up against the fork, so we're good. And uh, wheel spins nice, disc doesn't rub. And now I'm gonna try it on the trainer. So I'm happy with how it feels, how it rides. Um, I'm not very good on the trainer over there. It, uh, that was actually my first time on it. Uh, so I'm gonna do the bar wrap and I'm gonna cut this. Now I can't remove the fork from the bike because of the internal routing. Again, that's the problem about internal routing is it's annoying to service anything because if I wanna take off the fork, I have to undo the line and go through all that again. So I'm just gonna Take these spacers off, cut it flush there. I'm gonna cut it right at the bottom. I want it slammed um, as much as it can be with these big spacers here. Uh, and then put a little spacer on top because I'm not gonna be, I don't wanna cut the stem. So I'm gonna cut it with a fine tooth hacksaw blade. I'm gonna put black electrical tape around it so it doesn't fray. And I'm gonna wear breathing protection because those fibers are very bad for your lungs.
So there it is. Fire tape's on. Everything's done. Other than, you know, I might add cell phone mount up here and stuff, but a complete bike for what it is. And I want to do the weigh in uh, like this. So there's the few things I'll go over that I uh, messed up on and or wish I did different. So we got the front axle, I did that wrong. So just make sure if you're building a bike or something like this, make sure you got that all right before ordering the wheels. Um, next thing, internal routing's great, but annoying to deal with if you have to maintain something. Chain line of the GRX crank on a normal road frame because yes, this is a road frame, not a cyclocross frame. What I messed up there was, which I'm fine with, I like the frame. I'm gonna be riding it on much more road than I am off-road, so it's great. And I like the gearing, the cyclocross gearing anyway, because I'm a mountain biker, so. I mean, this is all I need. I don't need a two ring up front. So the issue here is the GRX crank has 2.5 millimeters this way of chain line. So the chain ring is put 2.5 millimeters this way compared to maybe an Altegra. Now that is all great when you're running big tires because then you get more clearance between here and here, especially when you're up in this gear. Here on a road bike, not a cyclocross frame with thin tires, I have tons of space between the chain ring, the frame, and then the chain and the tire, obviously. So there is no problem there. It doesn't work great on this setup. I am in the middle gear here and it's hard to tell in the video, but there is a bit of deflection, deflection in the chain this way. Uh, and this is the sixth gear. So it should be centered on with the chain ring. There should be no deflection at all, but there is, I have to switch down to um, one, one or two more, two more to get this chain straight and three and it's not bad. So that's wrong. That The only problem with that is it will um, give me a bit less shifting performance, hard to notice probably, and it will wear the chain faster if I'm using these gears up here because the chain will be bent while applying pressure. Um, again, there's not too many hills around here. That's not a huge deal to me, but that's something to look out for when going for this setup. Um, also, yep, so make sure you get the right size tires. This is 32, but you need a 28 for this exact frame. Flat mount worked pretty well, just required a bit of screwing around with. Make sure you get the right bottom rack for the frame, which I didn't, again, now it's good. Um, rear axle is all good. Again, I wanted to go with this frame over a cyclocross frame because I couldn't find any cheap Chinese cyclocross frames with the through axle front and rear, which I really wanted for stiffness and whatnot. But don't make that a decision. Don't make that the only reason you want a different frame because there's a lot of great frames out there that have the normal 10 by 130 millimeter quick release uh, standard that's been around for years. So, so don't, I, that's just me. I wouldn't, if, Anyone else, you know, just go without the through axle, go with the quick, quick release skewer. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna do a weigh in and then that will be the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you put any comments, questions down below because uh, I can help you with decisions and, or you can give me ideas and constructive criticism on this build. I mean, it's not, it's nothing special. It's a Chinese build, so. <laughs> Still costs money though, but a lot less than a normal build. One last thing, I'm not sure with this clamping stem, the clamp here on the stem, when I was uh, riding on the trainer, when I pushed down, when I put weight out here, it slipped a bit. So I put, I got an Allen key and tightened it up a lot more than five Newton meters as far as I know, but I had to do it. I, I kept on just tightening it a bit and seeing if it would slip and it would slip and I tightened it a bit more. So, I mean, fake stem, what do you do? And bars, so you can put more of that, um, 
you can put that carbon grease in there to get some more friction, but uh, that'll help. So we'll see. I'll, I'll report later if there's any, if that problem comes up in the future, riding on the road with a lot of vibrations and long-term weight down on it.